Welcome to Matt's Garage, everyone. Uh, my current project is around heating the garage. Now, as you can see, it's not yet uh, insulated. It will be insulated, it will be sheetrocked. But I'm getting prepared with you know all of the other projects I need to do. And one of the first ones was, you know, since we're here in the Boston area, it gets very cold in the winter, um, was to get some, uh, some heat in here. So I chose the comfort zone, uh, 5,000 watt. This is a 20 by 22 uh, garage uh, external footprint. You know, the internal footprint with the sheetrock is a little bit, uh, a little bit less than that. So I'm going to run this with a thermostat. Now it has a built-in thermostat, uh, but it's really not uh, very uh, effective. You have to, you know, reach up and, and turn it. Uh, you have to turn the heat to uh, use the switch there uh, to, to, to turn the heat. So it's not, uh, it's not the way you want to go. So uh, I purchased a thermostat. Uh, this is a Wi-Fi smart thermostat. Um, and I purchased both a transformer and a contactor. And there you can see I've got a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, breakers that I'm going to use. And basically, I'm going to use the contactor the way it would be used in a uh, air conditioning uh, system. Uh, there's going to be 220 going onto one side of the contactor, uh, 220 coming out on the other side going to the heater. Uh, the transformer will have its uh, a dedicated 110 line uh, powering it. And then uh, on the other side of the transformer, it's a, basically a transformer like you'd see in a furnace or uh, any uh, home uh, heating system. Uh, on the other side of the transformer is 24 volts. And that will be used to both uh, power the thermostat on the, 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 the C wire, the common wire, uh, typically the blue wire. Uh, and then <clears throat> the, the red wire and the uh, white wire will go on either side of uh, the contactor to activate it. So when the thermostat calls for heat, um, that essentially uh, puts power on, on the white side. The red is already connected. Uh, and so what that does is it closes the contactor and that will turn the, uh, the, the heater on. So I will come back uh, a little later, show you my wiring diagram, and then show you my progress. All right, just a little bit about the uh, wiring here it's pretty straightforward uh, the, the thermostat is a three wire thermostat so there's a, a common wire and a red wire both of which you can think of as being you know always hot at 24 volts uh, and there's a white wire that calls for heat when uh, heat is turned on so in the junction box uh, there's a contactor and the transformer uh, both of those are independently powered uh, so there's uh, 220 coming into the contactor there's 110 power in the transformer and um, pretty much the, the, the transformer is uh, just supplying power to the thermostat. And when heat is called for, one side of the transformer uh, goes to one side of the contactor, the other to the other side, and heat comes on. All right, here's a little uh, layout of how, how I think I'm going to lay out the, the junction box. Uh, you can see the transformer and the contactor in there. Uh, nothing's wired up yet, uh, but I got a 6x6 six by, six by 4 inch deep uh, PVC junction box. This is typical for what you would uh, put you know, outside of a building uh, to run uh, you know, conduit to a separate uh, structure and then uh, power from the inside. I, I just wanted to use something that had enough room for me to do the wiring, and I decided even though there is enough room inside the bottom of the heater to not put all of this wiring inside, I didn't want these components uh, you know, uh, unnecessarily exposed to heat, and I didn't want the, the, the thermostat wire exposed to heat uh, either. So that just gives you a sense of, uh, of you know, how I'm going to lay out the components. So as I mentioned, uh, I have two power sources coming into the, 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 the junction box. Uh, here I, I show you the uh, service panels. This is my new, nice, brand new service panel in the garage. Uh, I put a, a 30 amp breaker uh, for the heater. Uh, that runs directly to one side of the contactor. So it's a two pole, 220 volt uh, contactor. So, uh, you know, the, the black and the red, if you like, uh, go to one side of, of the contactor. Uh, the other side of the contactor uh, 
and you can see it a little later in the video I just use an air conditioning whip uh, and those two uh, red and black wires uh, go out uh, to the, the heater uh, terminals. Uh, I don't show it in the wiring diagram, I don't really talk about it much, but of course everything that can be grounded uh, is, is grounded. Uh, and then a separate 110 uh, circuit for uh, the thermostat that just powers the transformer which in turn powers. Okay, now we can take a look at the final result. So uh, you see here that uh, I've I've mounted the heater. It will be uh, temporarily pulled off once I get sheetrock in that area and then remounted. Uh, you can see the air conditioning whip uh, heading over to uh, the junction box. Uh, I don't show the details of the wiring, but the, the wiring diagram uh, was followed uh, pretty exactly. Uh, over to the right, you can see the orange 10-gauge uh, wire, uh, the white 14-gauge uh, wire, and then you can also see the brown 5-conductor uh, uh, thermostat wire. I'm not using uh, all of those conductors. I'm only using three three of them, the blue wire, the white wire, and the red wire. Um, and so, as I mentioned, uh, it is wired in such a way that um, the, uh, the common blue wire uh, is always hot. That heads back and uh, over to the thermostat and powers it. Uh, the red wire is also uh, always hot on the on the thermostat uh, wire and then the white wire is the call for heat wire the red and the white are on opposite sides of of the contactor uh, so when the thermostat calls for heat as i mentioned before um, contactor closes and you get uh, and you get power so uh, pretty easy to wire up a little tight in the box there a little uh, a little uh, cumbersome actually working with uh, with, with 10 gauge wire uh, overall uh, but uh, you can see here uh, the interior you see the 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 wires coming from the the air conditioning whip uh, going into the, uh, the the terminals on the heater itself so pretty straightforward uh, wiring job so so far very happy with it um, and I'll let you know uh, how much it costs Um, one more thing I forgot to mention is that uh, around on the other side, uh, I did mount the thermostat. I mounted it, you know, typical height, right around eye level. Uh, and one thing I've noticed is that um, this side of the garage uh, does reach the set point on the thermostat, you know, reasonably quickly. Uh, the orientation is such that uh, the, the fan is blowing, you know, on a diagonal uh, roughly towards the, the thermostat. It's fine. Uh, I've noticed on colder days and for us colder around here is sort of below freezing. Um, certainly the fan, uh, the, the heater rather, will kick on uh, a little more frequently. Uh, you hear a noticeably loud click, as I might have mentioned, uh, on the contactor. Uh, but by and large, uh, after you know an hour or so, the garage is reasonably well uh, heated. It's a little cooler on the, the service door side. Um, but, uh, but overall it's, uh, it's been working very well. Uh, I, I lost the voiceover on this, so I, I made a new one. Uh, I was trying to show here that it does in fact click on when the set point, uh, is, is, is reached. Um, but again, a good project, uh, total cost. I want to say, uh, a little over a hundred dollars for the heater. Uh, maybe about uh, $30 total for the additional components, the, the contactor and the transformer. Another $30 for the, uh, the junction box and a ridiculously large amount for the wire, like over $100 for, I think, 50 feet of wire. So anyway, that's the project. Really happy with it. Uh, please like and subscribe and talk to you soon.